Hi, I'm David Dawson, lecturer of double bass at Texas State University. In this session, I would like to talk about shifting, basically moving the hand and the arm from one position to another. Due to the great length of the string on the double bass, the frequency at which we shift is also quite great. However, following a few simple rules will greatly enhance our ability to shift with secure intonation and confidence. The most important element in shifting is hearing the note inside ourselves, coupled with a sense of affirmation that we're going to hit that note. Now, in order to arrive at the note on time, we have to shift early, and the motion of the shift must be prepared. We do this preparation by bringing the elbow down, back and around in a circular motion and we throw the arm. Okay, In sh shifts of shorter length, that motion is pretty small. However, in larger shifts, that motion of preparation and throwing the arm is much greater. So I can demonstrate a short shift is just a little bit. See, I bring the arm a little bit back and throw the arm on a bigger shift. I really have to prepare it and really give it a throw. So we're not just moving the arm from one position to the other. We're actually using gravity because we use gravity to hold the strings down and we throw the arm. Okay, so you might want to actually practice making this circular motion, bringing the arm back and throw it around. And then when you're at the end of your, say like a uh, baseball pitcher's wind up. When you're at the end of the windup, throw the arm. Okay? Now, when we're moving the arm from one position to the next, it's important that the fingers remain in contact with the string. Okay? And we shift with the finger we're going to land on. If we start with the first finger, and we land on a four, get your fourth finger down ASAP and shift with that finger, keeping the fingers in contact with the string. Now, the hand shape is also important. We want to shift in the hand shape that we're going to arrive on. And if we're shifting in a lower position to another lower position, the hand shape will remain the same. However, if we're shifting from a lower position into thumb position, you can see the shape that we arrive in is totally different. So what we want to do is get into that arrival shape as soon as we can and make that shift in that shape. Okay. So our thumb is behind the neck when we start, and yet when we arrive, the thumb is up here. A really interesting exercise is to find a position, a thumb position, with your thumb on the fingerboard, and then bring that whole shape down. Bring it back up. And you can see how the arm flows with great ease. However, we're probably not going to start our shift with our thumb on the fingerboard. So go back to your thumb behind the neck, and then see how it feels to make that shift. And you can see, oh, it's much easier to do with the thumb on the fingerboard, so we want to get into that shape as soon as we can. So as we're doing the wind-up, bring your thumb up and on top of the fingerboard. Okay. Now, um, practicing shifting. Different ways of doing it. A real common way of doing it is find a note. Any note will do. Find B natural. And then shift from B natural to different pitches. I recommend using diatonic, that is to say, in the key of. Don't use every note. Don't go B to C to C sharp to D to D sharp to E. Pick a key. So, for example, I could be in G major, but I'm going to start on B, so I will use the notes of G major. And I will practice my shifting. Start with the same finger and then shift to a pitch using each of the different fingers. Four, two, and one in low and lower position, and three, two, and one in the upper position. The second finger, you can see that preparation and throwing is pretty small. And then do it on every pitch. As the shifts get bigger, that wind up and throwing is a lot more necessary. So once again, prepare the shift, okay? Throw the arm, fingers must remain in contact with the string, shift in the shape that you're going to land on. Now when you're practicing vibrato, it's a good idea to practice um, you're practicing um, shifting 
it's a good idea to do it without vibrato because vibrato can obscure or actually hold high faulty intonation. And we want to see if we're actually getting the note. So practice it without vibrato, but then also practice it with vibrato. Okay? Because oftentimes when we do a shift in a piece of music, we will want vibrato. And if we're always only practicing our shifting without the vibrato, that it may be difficult to do the vibrato. So you want to practice your shift vibrating immediately upon the arrival. And then while it's not always possible, the best times to shift are during a rest, when nothing's happening at all. Or when you're playing an open string, you should shift on the open string. And the really common thing we do as bass players, open G, open D. Okay, and with these elements, shifting becomes a lot easier.